thank you for coming out. Everyone, this is awesome. I appreciate it. Um, thank you for going outdoors to do anything in this weather. Why do we live here? You really got to think about how like brutal the winter in the Northeast is. Really got to think about it. Like, winter in the Northeast makes it appealing to go to the state of Florida. Yeah, Florida, the place from the news. People are leaving here to go to there. That's not a good sign. It's so funny. All people do is shit on Florida. All we do is read insane articles about people from Florida. In January, we take one step outside and we're like, let's go to Florida. I don't care what's going on down there. I got to get out of here. But thank you for coming. I'm, uh, yeah, I don't know, 20, 29, getting a little older. Not that old, but a little older. We're like, my excitement for things starting to transfer. You know, like the way I used to react going to uh, parties, I now react that same way going to sleep. <laughs> like I got home a couple nights ago, laid down in bed and said out loud, let's fucking go. <laughs> this is going to be epic. Like just sad stuff to get excited about. I love sleep because I'm an adult. And adults love sleep because being awake is when you have to experience life. Uh, that's really what it is. It's an escape from life when you think about it. Sleep's a good testament to how tough adults are. And it's also a good testament to how amazing children's lives are. Adults love sleep. Kids' lives are so amazing they hate going to bed. What? <laughs> Try putting a nine-year-old to bed. You're like, it's time for bed. They're like, no! Please, just 20 more minutes of life. Like, they love it here. They'll negotiate with their parents to stay in life for longer. Can't get them to go to bed. And then they wake up early, voluntarily. Kids pop up at 7 a.m. on a Saturday. Like, yay, I'm back. All right. <laughs> Free food, no job. I'm going to wake up mom and dad. They're missing out. I mean, this is amazing. <laughs> Being awake as an adult, way less fun. It was bedtime for me. I'm like, thank God. I get to temporarily die. <laughs> you know, like, God, I could use a coma. You know, just really shut it down for a while. I'll see so much. If I ever woke up from a coma, I'd go back. I'd snooze a coma. <laughs> Even after a year, I'd be like, just five more minutes. I just want... Not moving in general is just pretty great. You know, like if I ever was in a coma and I woke up from a coma, I don't think I'd tell people I woke up from the coma. I gotta just pretend to still be in the coma if the doctor came in the room. It's like, oh shit. It's like I just lie in bed all day, every day. What a life. Some people idolize Tom Brady. My idol's the grandparents from Willy Wonka. <laughs> what a life they carved out for themselves. Grandpa Joe, what a piece of shit <laughs> that guy was. Lies in bed for 20 years. Charlie comes home with a ticket. He's like, oh, I can walk. <laughs> yeah, you could always walk. <laughs> this isn't a miracle. You're a scumbag. <laughs> I like going to sleep. I like going to sleep. But I also like to stay up late. I like those late hours. I like those late hours. It's fun. Something about being awake after midnight just makes me want to fill my head with the most useless information humanly possible. It'd be so late. Like, everyone in the Eastern time zone's asleep, and I'm in bed watching, like, a TikTok of how butter is packaged. I'm just like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> It'd be so late. Like, farmers are eating breakfast, and I'm like, it's so much butter. I, uh... <laughs> Last week at 2 a.m. on a Wednesday, I watched a six-minute video of how to milk a cow. <laughs> Never even been to a farm. But I thought, let's fill my brain with this information. Who knows? You never know. I don't know. Maybe some, one day someone had me at gunpoint. Like, fucking milk it. And I'll be like, all right. <laughs> they got to watch that video. <laughs> you know when you're up too late is when, like, you're watching, uh, like, cable TV and you see one of those, like, never-ending infomercials. You know what I'm talking about? You pass by it, you buy it like an hour later, it's still on, and you're like, how many testimonials could there possibly be for this Swiffer? <laughs> infomercials, infomercials are an easy target, but they're very funny. My favorite part of infomercials are like the end of infomercials, like the if you call right now segment, where they just offer you a bunch of free shit. I've never seen such desperation in my entire life. They'd be like, call the number below and buy our blender. And if you call right now, we'll give you nine free blenders <laughs> and our blender cleaning spray. And you can have like Seinfeld box set DVD out of, and my laptop and you can bang my wife. Please, just someone buy my fucking blender. <laughs> they, uh, sleep's great. Dreams are a bit much. <laughs> Life's crazy enough while I'm awake. And I gotta close my eyes, fall asleep, and my brain's like, psst, hey. You remember our childhood mailman? 
well, we're gonna go snorkeling with him. It's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty weird. Then we're gonna judge a spelling bee with last night's Uber driver. Then we're gonna fall off a cliff and wake up sweating. It's gonna be, it's gonna be quite a ride. We're all such idiots while we're asleep because like dreams are so insane and we can't tell they're dreams. Just like, there's so many red flags where I should be like, you know, something's off. I'm just walking around like, just a normal day, checks out. Time to give my friend's aunt a piggyback around my high school science lab. I never learned my lesson. I wake up every day like, oh, duped again. I should have known. I mean, a blowjob cafe? I should have known. Yeah, I'm getting a little older. Uh, I, can, I'm telling, I'm telling, I can tell I'm getting a little older because I'm starting to carry around Tums just in case. The just in case part is what's important. Like, I have two in my pocket right now. And I'm not planning on eating anything spicy. I, you never know. Tums are uh, great, though. I love Tums. One time I was at a concert, and uh, I like, well, wasn't feeling well, so I popped in one of my ETs, emergency Tums. <laughs> I popped in and this random guy next to me turns to me and goes, yo, can I get some of that? <laughs> I was like, sure, man. I gave it to him. He was like, thank you. This is going to be awesome. You're the man. So clearly he thought it was drugs. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. I thought he just really wanted a tum. He was like, is this good stuff? Is it strong? I was like, oh yeah, extra strength. <laughs> so I gave it to him. Half hour later, he looks over at me. He's like, I don't feel it at all. I thought he was talking about the heartburn. So I was like, good. The tums are working. <laughs> I yelled back at him, aren't tums the best? <laughs> He was like, I thought you said that was acid. I was like, no, sorry, antacid. Sorry. It's loud. I... <laughs> I'm a little older. Some people I know are starting to get married. Some are starting to have kids. A couple of people starting to have kids. I don't want, shouldn't have a kid right now. Like, you can tell, like, you should want to have a kid because you want to start a family. Only reason I would want a kid right now is just to name them something funny. <laughs> That's where I'm at. <laughs> Which would be funny now, but I think I'd regret it eventually, you know? feel bad for my kids would have to, like, explain that to people. So I'm gonna go up to my daughter, like, hey, what is Beth short for? She'll be like, oh, it's, it's Beth Amphetamine. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's a comedian, he thinks that's hilarious. <laughs> Which is why you've never heard of him. <laughs> no, I should not, I'm not responsible enough yet to have a kid. One day, maybe, but like, no, I shouldn't have a kid yet. But you know what's crazy? The fact that I just could. <laughs> No background checks? Like, really? Like, it's raising kids so important, and I just could? That's crazy. Where are our priorities as a society? If I want a baby, there are no hurdles. If I want a concert ticket, I have to prove I'm not a robot? Like, what? I have to sit there like there's a sliver of the stop sign in the photo. Does that count? I mean, how many am I supposed to click? There's some, I think there's some upsides to uh, being an adult that you don't appreciate, though. You know, like, uh, you no longer have to hide being drunk from your parents anymore. That was a doozy. Now you do whatever you want. Kick your door open, puke on the floor, sleep in the sink. It doesn't matter, you know? Remember coming home drunk in high school? Before you go in your house, you just stand outside and practice talking. Like, hi, mom. Hi, mom. Ah! The movie was great. Brian's mom says hi. Ah! <laughs> There's like nine pieces of gum in my mouth. She's like, oh, Sally sells seashell. Fuck it, let's do this. <laughs> and I'd always like go in the house and try to sound sober, but I'd always overshoot it and talk way too proper. Sound even more suspicious. Come in the house like I was from Victorian England. Like, the night was splendid, mother. <laughs> Thank you for inquiring. <laughs> of course I'm not drunk. <laughs> Let me smell your breath. Then I like go in my kitchen and make a drunk snack. Like that wouldn't blow my cover. My mom's like, what are you eating? I'm like, wow, I always get my pizza and frosting. What are you talking about? It's a normal snack. <laughs> Drinking's fun. Uh, being hungover's tough. Uh, not a hot take, obviously, but being hungover stinks, especially when you're around people who are not hungover. Because like, it sucks watching people be productive when you just can't do that. <laughs> like, well, I remember one time I went out and my roommates did not go out. And the next day we woke up just on completely different ends of the spectrum. Like I was just in the living room rotting on the couch like a corpse. And he came in with just like Joel Osteen energy. Just like, hey, let's attack the day. Like one of those, you know? And he was like, I'm gonna go on a two mile jog. You wanna come? And I was like, listen, 
I don't want to be dramatic, but I would rather dip my face in honey and headbutt a beehive. <laughs> Keep going to jog with you right now. He's like, come on, it's only two miles. I was like, only two miles? I haven't changed the channel in four hours. Because the clicker's on the other couch. Two miles, I can't make it slightly out of reach. I wish I knew you were home. I wouldn't have ordered Domino's just so the delivery guy could hand me the remote. I didn't even order food. I just wrote the delivery instructions. Can you come hand me my remote? It's fun. I like uh, growing up. It's fun. Weed. I don't smoke weed. I have before. It's pretty harmless. But growing up, I was very afraid of weed because of those commercials with the girl on the couch. I don't know if any of you remember these. It's worth the YouTube. It's very funny. But there used to be these anti-pot commercials. And it'd be like, all these in like dark, ominous living room, and there'd be like a girl on a couch, but it was like just her skin, like in a puddle. <laughs> so it was the girl on the couch. That's the girl who smoked pot. And then her sober friend would come into frame and be like, Kimberly used to be fun. <laughs> but then she started smoking pot. <laughs> now she can't do anything anymore. It's like, that girl can't do it anymore because she has no bones. <laughs> That's clearly a separate medical condition. That's not from weed. How long has she been sitting there? Don't make a commercial. Call an ambulance. Looks pretty serious. But those commercials are just so dramatic and inaccurate. And like, show a commercial of what uh, like weed's actually like. I want to see the same commercial where the like, girl has all her bones. And she just turns to her friend and is like, let's watch Planet Earth. Like, that's a weed commercial. That's the whole thing. They should be like, this is what's going to happen when you smoke pot. Yo, no, are fish homeless? <laughs> or always at home? And that's the, that's the end of the commercial. I was, uh, I think recently I was like, uh, thinking recently just how much like technology has evolved like in the past like 15, 20 years. It's crazy, even in such a small period of time. Like, remember when you had to like go online? Now we just are online. Like, it used to be a thing you had to do, you went online. Now you just pull out your phone, you're on the internet. When I was in middle school, if you wanted to get online, you had to go on your family computer and hope no one was on the house phone. That was the only way to do it, which I always thought was funny, by the way, that like, these people created an internet. Do you know how hard it is? And then they just got stumped by the house phone. <laughs> Couldn't figure it out. They're saying, you're gonna have to do it separately. We're exhausted. I don't, I don't. But you had to do that. You, had, you couldn't be on the phone and online at the same time. I remember being 12 years old, like, get off the phone! I need to change my AIM profile. I just broke up with my girlfriend of two days. Who knows the lyrics to Good Riddance by Green Day? It's crazy. There's obstacles now. You can't, like, I feel like people don't appreciate the luxury of free Wi-Fi. In this day, like, you can go on the internet on your phone for free. That's crazy to me. Like, if kids don't appreciate, like, if, how scary it was to be on your parents' phone plan in, like, 2008 and have a flip phone and accidentally go on the internet. Remember the internet button on a flip phone? Terrifying. I pressed that thing once and never again. After my dad got the phone bill, was like, who went on the internet for three and a half seconds? Now I have to sell the car. It's $80,000 a minute. I hope you're happy. Everything's so easy now, like getting online, music, like Apple Music, Spotify, so easy. Like, again, when I was in middle school, if you wanted music, you had to download it illegally onto your family computer from LimeWire. Yeah. And every time you download something from LimeWire, it gave your computer a little bit of herpes. <laughs> until one day the computer just stopped working and you had to act like you didn't know why. <laughs> like, why is the computer so slow? I don't know, what's a computer? I don't even know. <laughs> I'd be like 12 years old, just like, Dell sucks, I don't know. <laughs> if you're not familiar with LimeWire, LimeWire was like this giant database of like illegal songs and videos. And how LimeWire worked is you'd be like, all right, I want to find a song, search. And LimeWire would be like, all right, here's mostly porn. <laughs> and he's like, no, I just want the song I typed in. And they'd be like, oh, it's in there somewhere. You're gonna have to poke around. And so, yeah, sometimes you gotta click on the file to see if it was a song or a video. And if you guessed wrong, you learned a lot. <laughs> One wrong click, gaping butthole. I'd be like, I'm 12, I just wanted to do Blink-182 song. 
It was great. Anything you typed in LimeWire, there was porn related to the words you typed in. It was insane. You couldn't type anything in. You'd be like, red hot chili peppers. You'd be like, hot redhead gets fucked with a pepper. And you're like, what? How does that exist? That's so ridiculous. What are the odds? You're like, Matchbox 20. It's like 20 guys come on a box of matches. You're like, that is so specific. No way that exists. Some music I couldn't even listen to because I knew the results would be too inappropriate just based on the band's name. Growing up, I never got to listen to The Strokes. <laughs> Alice in Chains, forget about it. <laughs> Learned the hard way, I couldn't search the band. Cream. <laughs> uh, but yeah, a little wrong. But I'm not, I'm, say I keep saying I'm getting older. I'm not that old though, but sometimes I wonder like what the world's gonna be like when like millennials and Gen Z are like the senior citizens. I just think it's gonna be funny. Cause like, people, we're not gonna change. It's just gonna be hilarious. Just a bunch of 90 year olds walking around with IVs like, my NFT is lit. Like, like, <laughs> people listening to music like, put on WAP. <laughs> it's gonna be like, it's just gonna be a new type of old person. It's gonna be funny. You know? Just be, and the world's gonna have to adapt to cater to old millennials. It's gonna be funny, like, in 50 years, you might see commercials like, it's a cane and a selfie stick. <laughs> if you call right now, we'll give you nine free sticks. <laughs> People still be talking shit about each other's social media. They're like, you see the picture Sarah posted wishing Brad a happy birthday? She doesn't care it's his birthday, she's just showing off her new hip. <laughs> Very transparent. We all know why you posted that. I think my least favorite thing about social media is like that, narcissism. Oh, but people just will post anything just to show themselves off. People love getting likes. People just love getting likes. I don't even think people would do certain things if they couldn't post about it. Like, I think if social media ceased to exist, I think there would be a 30% drop in marathon participation. <laughs> I think everyone in their 20s would be like, well, now what's the point in running? If I can't post a photo of myself at the finish line drinking a craft beer to show everyone I'm as fun as I am fit. I get it though, you like attention for your accomplishments. So it feels good when like you do something good and like people know about it, that feels good, you know? So I think it actually would have been kind of annoying to maybe like do something impressive before technology and social media because it would take people a while. It's like, fine. like if I invented something right now, I could like repost something and I know everyone would see it and that would make me feel good, it feels good. But if it was like 1930 and I was the one who just invented scotch tape, pretty big deal. I bet I would run into people I know before they caught wind of my accomplishment, I'd just be standing there like, they don't know how amazing. I feel like I would just be steering every conversation towards tape <laughs> so I could bring it up and impress them. I'd be insufferable. I'd be on a first date, she'd be like, I feel like we're really bonding. I'd be like, I know, it's like some sort of adhesive. <laughs> what do you want to drink? I'm gonna get a scotch. I. I just go get there early, rip her menu in half. <laughs> she sits down, she's like, it's weird. I'm like, I actually have something. It's... <laughs> but I mean, like, if I climbed Mount Everest before social media, I'd want everyone to know, but I want to brag about it. I'd just be finding terrible segues. People come up to me like, hi. I'd be like, you want to know what's high? <laughs> People love likes. You can learn stuff from, from likes, though, you know? Like, I was talking to a girl recently, she was like, I wish I knew which guys wanted to hook up with me. I wish they would just tell me. And I was like, you just defined an Instagram like. Like, what are you talking about? If a guy likes your photo, he doesn't care about the photo. If a guy likes it, he's just reminding you he would have sex with you. That's all. A like on your photo just means still alive, still would. That's all it means. Guys, guys don't care about the photo. I'm not sitting there like, oh. Perfect filter for that burrata. Oh, God, sick boomerang. No. I, uh, I don't like following women on Instagram, mostly just because pictures of hot women upset me. Some guys follow these like models on Instagram and they're always showing, they're, like, why? They're always showing me, like, dude, check this, check I'm like, no, I'm having a good day. Why would I want to see something amazing that I'll never have? That's torture. If I was allergic to dairy, I wouldn't follow a cheesecake account. Just to keep tabs on what I'm missing out on. 
Also, fellas, stop showing me these pictures in public. There's right. no upside. The guys are like, dude, check out this chick. I'm like, cool, thanks for the boner at Chipotle. <laughs> now I have to order at a 45 degree angle. People are always on their phones. You know what also sucks about phones is that people now have like videos on their phones, right? Like people used to only be able to show you photos of their children, but now there's videos. So photos are easy. You just be like, oh, cute, and go about your business. Now I'm stuck there for four minutes <laughs> watching a three-year-old suck at walking. Like, I, I found a way to combat this though. Like if somebody ever had, well, like what I like to do is if someone shows me a video of their children, I will then show them a video of someone they don't know. <laughs> Last week, someone at work was like, it's my daughter tying her shoes. I was like, cool, here's a video of my friend Mark eating a lasagna. <laughs> yeah, not that interesting, is it? To watch a stranger do something simple. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, on the phone a lot. I have other hobbies. I watch TV, you know. But I like watching. Sometimes I'll watch reruns of To Catch a Predator. Just to remind myself I'm not that bad. It's a good strategy. If you ever feeling down about yourself, throw on To Catch a Predator. Watch those idiots walk into those houses with pizza and Game Boy. Like, well, I thought she was 18. <laughs> you realize you're doing quite fine. Last week I threw it on. I was like, you know what? That third cupcake for dessert, not that big a deal. I'm doing pretty amazing, relatively. If you want to feel better about yourself, watch To Catch Prayer. If you want to feel worse about yourself, watch America's Got Talent. Great way to make yourself feel like a useless piece of garbage. Because the things people do on America's Got Talent are just so insanely impressive. And they also have these crazy backstories of adversity that make it even more impressive. Someone will go up and be like, hi, everyone, my name's Connor. I'm 14 years old. I was born with a very rare eye disease that has rendered me almost completely blind. At the age of two, I started juggling butcher knives. <laughs> which has been tough because of, you know, the blindness. Now I perform and panhandle on street corners to help support my paralyzed single mother. <laughs> I'm watching it like, yeah, well, I just made an omelet all by myself. <laughs> Very humbling show to watch. <laughs> and I can tell the things that people do on America's Got Talent are like insanely impressive, but it's too impressive for like the average viewer to like emotionally connect to. And that's what you want, you know? Like, I just think, like, someone will go up there and be like, hi, judges, for my performance today, I'm going to be solving 30 Rubik's Cubes in five seconds while on fire. Or like, do something crazy. I think you just say something more relatable. I want to see someone go on stage and be like, hi, judges, for my performance today, I will be assembling this Ikea wardrobe <laughs> without saying the F word. I'd be like, what? No chance. How's he going to do that? <laughs> I want to see someone go on stage and turn on a television with one button on the first try. Wouldn't that be nice? It's like whoever's making TVs these days are just fucking with people. They're just like, hey, how about we make it so when they press the power button, the monitor goes on, but the cable box goes off. <laughs> and you press it again, and flip-flops, they gotta walk over. It'll be funny. It'll be funny. What else is new? Uh, I'm trying to eat healthier, which isn't true. And, um... No, I'm trying. It's just tough. You know? People... It's tough in this day and age. Sometimes people are like, oh, it's easy. You have such easy access to healthy food. And it's like, yeah, but there are also options. And no one to stop me. There's not a single chaperone in my kitchen. Three, three like, hundreds of years ago, it was easy to eat healthy because organic food was all they had. To them, it probably tasted good. They had nothing to compare it to. I have eaten a chocolate lava cake. Can't just forget about that experience and act like broccoli tastes reasonable. I've eaten a fried Oreo. Food from the earth? Gross. Last week I ate unsalted almonds. Have you ever had unsalted almonds? They're fucking disgusting. I had to chase it with a shot of queso. I tried to help, especially because like, my mom's like a huge health freak, especially with like, for example, she'll like beef, she'll only eat grass-fed beef, which is like, beef comes from a cow, we'll only eat grass, it's like organic, healthier. And she's always like, Tom, you should only eat grass-fed beef. And I'm like, mom, do you think I care what the cow ate? I barely care what I eat. Also, beef tastes too good to care where it came from. 
Right? Like, if there's a Five Guys cheeseburger in front, I'm not asking for the cow's resume. <laughs> I'm eating it. I think I'd care if the beef came from a cow who only ate grass. I would eat beef if it came from a cow who only ate ass. <laughs> If a waiter at a restaurant was like, this filet is actually ass-fed beef. <laughs> yeah, this cow was a real pervert. Uh, and he died pretty quickly, because that's all he ate. And he also did not eat the asses of the brown cows, so we also think he was a little racist. <laughs> this is racist ass-fed beef. I'd be like, yeah, hurry up, medium rare. What do you, you got any other cows back there that'll come out faster? Sure, you got any anti-Semitic crackhead cows? Bring them out. <laughs> Yeah, it's a weird one. <laughs> I, uh, it's good to uh, it's good to have um, like sporting events have some fans in the stands again. But it was a good little breather. Like if you like going to sporting events, like I do, like most people do, there's just nothing worse than like sitting next to like a, an obnoxious male sports fan. You know, like, you ever sit next to, like, the shoot it guy? Shoot it! <laughs> These guys who think they're, like, freelance volunteer assistant coaches <laughs> trying to, like, impress the girl they're with. Like, shoot it! <sighs> when you have that shot, you take it. <laughs> I would know. I played in middle school. It's like, all game, shoot it! These guys are like plumbers. They were trying to tell LeBron James how to play. I don't yell at athletes. It's stupid. It's also pretty rude. You think about it, if sports are still a profession, you'd never yell like that at someone in any other profession if they weren't performing to your liking. If you were at a restaurant and your food was taking a while to come out, you wouldn't run in the kitchen and be like, cook it! <laughs> you suck! <laughs> this Olive Garden should trade you. <laughs> I played, I like going to sporting events, play, playing sports, played sports my life. I still like playing pickup basketball sometimes, which is fun, but guys always insist on doing like shirts versus skins. You know? Whenever a guy on the other team's like, we'll be skins. I'm like, you'll be skins? All right, so I'll be going home. I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna spend my, spend my Saturday grinding on your like hairy, sweaty back. It's not fun. <laughs> I told him last time, I was like, why do we have to do shirts versus skins? He's like, oh, so we can tell who's on what team. I was like, or we could leave our shirts on and just do faces versus faces. <laughs> I can see everyone's face and we all look different enough. <laughs> No one's wearing a ski mask, and none of us are twins. I think we can figure it out. As if we're all wearing shirts, and someone's like, pass them, and be like, Greg, is that you? I can't tell, I need to see your nipples. Oh, Sometimes I think sports uh, team names are funny, like, Especially a college team names, like a lot of like a lot of them, and they're a little weird sometimes. Because team names are supposed to be I don't know, cool or intimidating or something. But then you have some like the Tennessee Volunteers. What a lame name. What's even their mascot? Is there just a guy walking up and down the sidelines like I'll do it? <laughs> Dressed in a costume of a normal guy, like I can do it. Go Tennessee. <laughs> I wish that was I wish I was that mascot. So I just take it way too far. People are like, where's the volunteer's mascot? Be like, he's in Peru building schools. <laughs> really, really committing to the role. <laughs> Say, uh, sensitive time in this world, you know. A lot of people getting canceled one I it's you know, unless you've lived a perfect life, brace yourself. It's Tough Even like sometimes, you know, people that finally like nitpick about something and they'll get him in trouble. Like honestly, I think if he was around right now, I think even Jesus would get canceled. <laughs> if he was performing like all the same miracles, people would find something to, like if, right now, if Jesus cured a blind man, I bet half of the internet would praise him. Be like, oh, it's amazing. What a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. The other half of the internet would be like, why didn't he cure a blind woman? <laughs> Jesus is sexist. <laughs> Men have had vision for long enough. Some people just make big deals about things nowadays, and some of it's warranted, some of it's not warranted. Some of it's not warranted, it's mostly just white people creating adversity for themselves just to like be a part of it. <laughs> like minorities have real problems. Black people are like, cops are killing us, and white people are like, yeah, and <laughs> gluten. <laughs> it's killing us. Sure, it takes longer than a bullet, but it's essentially a poison. 
I am white. I'm a straight white man. Hold your applause. I am, and I've had a great, I have had a great, very privileged life, which is why I don't pray. I think it's, I think it's selfish. I don't know if you take a look around the world lately, but God's got a lot on his plate right now. He doesn't need first world prayers clogging up his inbox. So much horrible stuff going, like, going on. I can't hit him up because I'm like running late for something, you know? There's like war, poverty, disease. I can't be like, please let me make this ferry to Nantucket. Please. I'm going to be late for mimosas. I bought this vest for nothing. If white people just stop praying for a while, I think God can catch up with some of the serious prayers in the queue and figure it out. Because he's getting serious prayers. He's getting like, dear God, civil war is costing my home, my family. Please help me. Amen. And God has to be like, well, you're going to have to wait a little because there's a soccer tryout in Connecticut. And there's only one spot on the team. And Bryce prayed before you. I just, there's an order. There's an order. I can't just bump you up. Um, I grew up religious. Not, I mean, I went to Catholic school, so I know all the stories, you know, Catholic stories. One, the one guy I always felt bad for was uh, Doubting Thomas. Familiar with this character? It's a biblical character. His name's Doubting Thomas. And his, he was named Doubting Thomas because when Jesus resurrected, rose from the dead, Thomas initially heard the news. He didn't believe it. Seems pretty unfair that everyone in history knows this guy is doubting Thomas. He doubted one thing. That was pretty fair to doubt. Like, his friends came up to him like, hey, remember our buddy, Jesus? He just rose from the dead. Thomas was like, ah, you guys are fucking with me. And now he's, now he's doubting Thomas forever? That's not fair. I don't think he earned the nickname, frankly. It's not like he was just walking around doubting everything. People coming up to him like, hi, I'm Pam. Doubt it. <laughs> Didn't earn the nickname. You know what's crazy in that situation? Was everyone except doubting Thomas. So when you hear someone rises from the dead, you just believe it. Sure, Jesus did some tricks while he was alive, but you know, if David Blaine rose from the dead, I'd still have some questions. <laughs> I don't know where I stand in the religious thing. Oh, there's God or not. A lot of unfair stuff happens that makes you question it. You know, people get cancer. Cheese is bad for you. It's just... It's tough. I'm skeptical about a few things about religion. One thing I'm skeptical about religion is, like, the way the Bible was written, because there was crazy stuff going on in the Bible. Like, there was insane events happening. It was like a virgin gave birth to a child. And that child, Jesus, grew up was performing these crazy miracles. There's tons of other insane stuff going on in the Bible. So I'm skeptical because for the, like the, all the crazy stuff that the writers of the Bible were witnessing and documenting, the Bible contains very few exclamation points. <laughs> Those writers were suspiciously nonchalant about the things they witnessed. How is the Bible not in all caps? <laughs> then I would believe it. It was all caps. Like, yes, that is how you react to a guy parting an ocean. <laughs> Definitely yell about Moses. Like, in the Bible, the waters were divided, ends in a period. I'm calling bullshit. <laughs> like, if I wrote the Bible, I'd just be like, now reading from the book of Tommy. Holy shit! Where the fuck am I? This Jesus guy is sketchy, bro. Should we look into any of this? Why am I the only one who's freaking out? Amen. Um, yeah, heaven and hell, it's another thing. I don't know. I don't think there's a heaven and hell. And that's why I hope there isn't. You know? Because I'm living right now like I don't think there's a heaven or hell. So like I just want to live as long as I can on earth. But like heaven's the most perfect place you can be in the world. So I'm going to be pissed. Or not the world, but like heaven, you, nothing beats heaven. That's what I'm saying. So I'm going to be pissed if I live to be like 95 and I die and I go to heaven. I'm going to be mad I stay on stupid earth for so long. <laughs> when it was possible to hold... Like if you're religious and you think you're going to heaven... What are you still doing here? <laughs> Heaven doesn't have mosquitoes or jury duty. You could be up there right now riding go-karts with Gandhi or whatever, <laughs> eating drunk pizza for every meal. I don't know what they do up there. And you're still down here, just like on hold with Comcast. <laughs> Why, just go to heaven. 
I'm not saying kill yourself. But I'm saying, why would you not be living on the edge? There's no reason to not do crazy shit if death is the best case scenario. If I was religious, I'd be insane. People would be like, where are you going after church? I'm like, I'm going to do ecstasy and tightrope walk the Grand Canyon. I'm like, why? Because if I live, what an experience. And if I die, heaven. It's a win-win. Uh, so you, guys, you guys like fucking... <laughs> I don't have a segue for this. That's, we're talking about it's time to talk about sex. Uh, no segue. Um, everyone loves sex. There used to be this stigma was like men are like per bar and women are like no, but every, we know everyone likes sex. The difference is that men would never turn down sex. That's the difference. If a woman says no, it means no. If a man says no, it means he misheard you. <laughs> Double check, enunciate. <laughs> That's the difference. Another one is that men would just do anything for sex. That's the other difference, right? Like, I, I read this thing recently, and when I say I read, I mean I saw a TikTok. And, <laughs> and it was to basically saying that, like, there's a species of octopi, and in order for the male octopus to have intercourse, it has to tear its penis off, place it inside the female, and then it dies. I mean, the commitment. So they, those guys know ahead of time if they have sex, they'll die. And they're still just like, let's go get some octopussy. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> Ridiculous. I mean, I, I, I'm not surprised. You know who else would do that if they had to? Male humans. That one, <laughs> streets would be littered with dickless dead dudes. Be stepping over on your way to work like, oh my God, is that Phil? Oh. Come on, man, they warned us. We had that big meeting. Yeah. Another big difference between men and women is that like straight women will sometimes like sexually experiment with each other. Straight guys do not, and thank God. No one needs to hear those stories. Not for like a homophobic reason. Straight guys are just gross people. Like women are beautiful creatures. When women tell stories, it's like hot and fun. It's like, oh, what happened? It's like, oh, I hooked up with like Sarah. It was crazy. We like had a bunch of martinis, started making out. I'm like, her hand went up my thigh and like went under my pants. Like, that's hot. You know what's not hot? Hey, what happened last night? Puh, I blew Jeff. <laughs> ah. Ah. We split a rag of Natty Lights and some buffalo wings. He <laughs> reached over to help me fix my Xbox controller. Ah. Like, that's just hot for no one. We don't need it. We don't need it. Yeah, one more, one more thing. I was... One more thing. I was, out, I was out recently. I got very drunk. I spent the night drinking Long Island iced teas, which don't do that. You know what's in a Long Island iced tea? It's horrifying. Vodka, gin, rum. I'm halfway there. Tequila, triple second, Coca-Cola. Like, what, jaywalking is illegal and that drink's not? Who invented that drink? That does not sound like it was invented by a bartender so that people could have fun. That sounds like it was invented by an assassin who lost the poison he was supposed to use. So he just threw together the worst liquids he could find and was like, a few of these should kill someone. And the next day they're like, well, did he die? And they're like, no, nah, but he had to find his best friend and made out with six people. I guess that's what happens when you drink these. But anyways, I was very drunk and I ended up uh, going home with this girl because I'm a baller and... Uh, <laughs> No, it's like, it's like whatever. Um, it's whatever. It's whatever. Um, and like, we were in bed. We weren't like having sex, but we were like making out, and she asked if I wanted a hand job. So I reached over, grabbed my phone to check the date to see if I time traveled back to 10th grade. <laughs> to my disbelief, it was 2021. And I'm not complaining. Whatever women want to do to me, I'm very grateful. If you touch a penis in any way, God bless you. These things are disgusting. Penis looks like something you'd see in a documentary about the deep ocean. They're gross. That's why men are lucky, because vaginas are gross, but they're on the inside. We don't have to see them. We just send our guy in there like a bucket down a well. If I ever see it. Women see penises and they still truck ahead. God bless you, ladies. So anyway, she asked for a hand job, and then she was like, also, don't, like, it's going to be an amazing hand job. And I was like, that's an oxymoron. 
she was like, also, I'll let you finish wherever you want. And I was like, that's adorable. Now you think I'm gonna come close to finishing from my hand job while I'm drunk. Sober, that would be hard. Drunk, negative percent chance. Helen Keller would have a better chance finishing a Sudoku than I would have. Finish a drunk hand job. You ever be a hand job I'm drunk? It's like when a waiter offers me Parmesan cheese. It's like, all right, just let me know when. I'm like, it's gonna be a while. <laughs> Almost, not even close. All right, you guys have been great. Thank you so much.